a couple years when I go, I said, this guy is the best offensive player. And he's not a great player as Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant. But this guy here may be the greatest offensive player we've ever had. So the Houston Rockets go down 4-1 in the second round to the Los Angeles Lakers. Which when you truly think about things, it's not the worst thing that could possibly happen. The Los Angeles Lakers are an amazing team and arguably the best team in the game of basketball at this very moment. But you see, that's the thing. It doesn't really matter when you're the Houston Rockets. This is a team that has been all in for as long as I can remember. When you're all in, if you're not first or second or third, pretty much if you're not even playing in the conference finals, it's like you're basically last. And the Rockets' last move to go all in involved trading Chris Paul for Russell Westbrook. It wouldn't be a straight up swap. And it was understood that Chris Paul was once one of the worst contracts in the entire NBA. Not only did the Rockets trade Chris Paul, they traded draft picks. So now the Houston Rockets have Russell Westbrook, James Harden, a bunch of decent players, and no future. But hey, maybe the time to panic hasn't come just yet. Let me know what you guys think about that down in the comments below and what you think about the Rockets' future. The Rockets are my second favorite team in the entire NBA. James Harden is one of my favorite players. As a Rockets fan, I'm very scared for the future. Not just the future, but also the present. I have to report everything surrounding the NBA, no matter how ridiculous a rumor can get. And I think this is going to be fun, if nothing else. So if you guys could do me a major favor right now and go ahead and drop a thumbs up on this video, it tells the YouTube algorithm you guys enjoy my content and it helps me grow. And I appreciate that so much because I'm nothing without you guys supporting my content. Also, if you find yourself getting recommended a lot of my videos or just really enjoy my content, go ahead and subscribe because you will not want to miss another Get Like Coop video. And that's fact. We have a lot to unpack this video. I think if James, I think James Harden could get 80 in a game. If he would, if he went out and just say, I'm just gonna get 80. I wanna know right now, do you guys think James Harden is the best offensive player ever? If not, where do you rank him? As you guys can tell, Charles Barkley is very high on James Harden. And I think rightfully so. You can argue too high, too low. It's entirely up for interpretation, but I have to say, I do think James Harden is one of the best offensive players ever. And I think over the course of his career, he's gotten very disrespected. He's had a lot of good, decent rosters, but I just don't think the necessary amount of help or complimentary pieces to really get him to the next level. Obviously, the Rockets' best chance to get to the next level and truly win a championship was when they dropped game seven against the Golden State Warriors. We all know what happened that series, the absurd amount of missed threes, the Chris Paul injury, the James Harden and Chris Paul chemistry issues that started to develop over time. This was just such a frustrating duo because Chris Paul, James Harden, all of the talent in the world, two of the best players at their respective positions just weren't able to overcome and take down the Golden State Warriors. Tough. I think James Harden has got a lot of criti criticism for his play style, and I do think Kobe was right. I'm not a fan of in terms of winning championships. I don't think that style is ever going to win championships. But at the same time, you have to keep your team's head above water to win games. I don't think the way the Rockets play basketball is something that is going to necessarily net a championship. I agree with Kobe. I thought Chris Paul was a great addition for the Rockets and somebody that was able to take off a lot of pressure from James Harden. But of course, the season Kobe was referencing, he knew James Harden had to do what he had to do to go out and win games, and it was very exciting to watch. As we take things back to 2020, I want you guys to check out this quote from James Harden after they went down 4-1 to the Los Angeles Lakers. Before these last few games, we were number one in defense, you know, so it was the small things like the, the, the rebounding, you know, we're small, we can't rely on a bigger guy to rebound the basketball for us. We have to take on the challenge that as the shot goes up, we find a guy and, and, and box out. And we just weren't weren't you know, disciplined enough uh, throughout you know, times like in, in, in games, and that's why the you know, Lakers went on runs. Uh, and it's kind of deflating when you get stops, you get three or four stops, and 
they get offensive rebounds and they get putbacks or uh, they, they make you pay with three-point three shots. So um, it's just small details like that. So if we're going to play small ball, we got to get, you know, make sure our defensive rebounding is on point, things like that. So, um, yeah. Small ball. This quote, this video from James Harden was a harsh reminder to me that the Rockets went all in on small ball. When the Warriors went all in on small ball, they knew what they were doing. It wasn't a desperation move. When the Rockets went all in on small ball, I feel like they thought it was a move that they had to make to get the most out of Russell Westbrook, who so sorely needs spacing. Because we've seen James Harden with Clint Capella, and we've seen James Harden turn pretty much any big he's played with, even if they're poor offensively, into somewhat of a threat on the offensive side of the basketball, even if it's just for lobs or easy layups. James Harden points out that the Rockets had to rebound better. Well, the truth is that's pretty tough to do when your tallest player is around 6'8 and your center is 6'5", 6'6". With that being said, I actually think Dan Tony is a very solid coach. I think he gets a lot out of the talent that he's given. But now with Dan Tony out of town, I'm not sure just getting a new coach is going to be enough to turn the corner for this Rockets franchise. The Rockets are a team that has to look at dealing whatever assets they possibly have. They're a team that may have to look at dealing Russell Westbrook and also James Harden. Unfortunately, Russell Westbrook might have somewhat of an immovable contract, but hey, we've seen immovable contracts before get moved, right? So maybe there is hope that there may be a suitor for Russell Westbrook. Now I know Westbrook was returning from injury and clearly not 100%, but that doesn't change the fact that while on the basketball floor, he made poor decision after poor decision. And the same problems that held him back in the regular season, like his jump shot, were still there and a major problem in the postseason. But I'll give it to Westbrook. I thought he did have some solid games. He didn't want any double teams. Uh, that'll be now the fourth team foul. <laughs> and you can't say better double down 29. But as it stands, I'm not sure him and James Harden are the perfect match in basketball paradise. Comment down below, if you were the Houston Rockets, would you be trying to run it back one more time? Try to get James Harden a more traditional coach? Or would you be looking at possible trade options? I do think it would be interesting to see James Harden with a Doc Rivers level coach. Speaking of coaching, there have been rumblings that the 76ers are looking at hiring Mike D'Antoni and they believe that D'Antoni could help get James Harden to Philly. Now, last May, D'Antoni said he only wanted to coach about two or three more seasons, which included 2019 to 2020 at the time. So if James Harden is part of the Philadelphia 76ers plans, waiting until free agency or he's a free agent might not be an option for them. So if the 76ers want Harden, there's a good chance that there's going to have to be a trade. Which brings us to the topic, would the Philadelphia 76ers be looking to trade some of their assets or would they have to go out, they probably would have to go out and trade Ben Simmons or Joel Embiid? I've seen a lot of speculation that Ben Simmons is the one who would end up being traded to Houston. Now, immediately what comes to mind is Ben Simmons and Russell Westbrook sounds absolutely disgusting, but I'm sure the Rockets would be able to get off of the Russell Westbrook contract in some way, shape or form. I'm not sure how, but I just have a weird feeling about these things. Now, Ben Simmons in Houston would also be fun. I just think Simmons is somebody that has the talent to be one of the best players in the league. And I kind of think it would suck if they did trade Ben Simmons to the Rockets and they got D'Antoni because I've always wanted to see Ben Simmons unlocked in a D'Antoni type of system. Now, with that being said, I think Ben Simmons and I think Joel Embiid are kind of opposites of each other where their games don't necessarily complement each other. And I don't think Joel Embiid necessarily fits into what D'Antoni traditionally has liked to do. This is a big guy. He doesn't necessarily get down the court very quickly. He could shoot the three-point ball. Joel could shoot threes, but he's not a great three-point shooter. Whereas we know Ben doesn't shoot the three-point ball at all, really. But you would hope that the 76ers and D'Antoni would be able to eventually get that into his game. 
And again, the spacing that D'Antoni would bring around Ben Simmons would be something that would be so much fun to watch. In the open floor, I think Ben Simmons is a top two, top three player. He's that good on the break. Then he also has the potential to be a small ball five. He also has the potential to be a monstrous role man, which we've seen in spurts before. I mean, if you get a creative coach, Simmons is essentially the ultimate chess piece. I'll give it to Daryl Morey. Going all in and trying to beat the Golden State Warriors was a bold move. But now that the game is almost over, what do we have to show for it? If the Rockets want to possibly jumpstart a rebuild, they really don't have much of a choice other than trading James Harden. And I think that's the unfortunate reality of the Houston Rockets. But hey, maybe they don't want to trade James, which if they don't, I really just want to see James playing competitive basketball in the conference finals at the very worst. He's got a legacy that does not reflect everything that it should. It's still being built, and I don't think he's gotten half of the respect that he deserves. Just because he's such a high level scorer, they sleep on him being one of the best passers in the league. That's tough. Be sure to click the video on the screen right now. Be sure to subscribe. I'm Get Like Coop, guys, and I will see you in the next one.